Hello, this is Mark from Productive Computing. Thanks for joining me on this video. Today we're talking about the platform Claris and the name of the product is called FileMaker. The subject of today's discussion is encryption and decryption, specifically protecting fields or locking field data within a FileMaker solution. This is down to the field level and there's not many ways to do that out of the box. There's a couple ways, and we're going to talk about one of those ways here in this video. We're going to be deeply exploring the functions called encrypt and decrypt, or to be more specific, it's crypt encrypt and crypt decrypt. This sounds a little confusing at first, but it's a lot easier once you see it in action. What I thought we would do is take one of our solution files called the Core CRM Pro and use that and incorporate encryption and decryption on a particular document table. In other words, if I want to encrypt text data or container data, we're about to see how to do that now. So I'll take you on that demo and then we can talk about this further. So here I have the Core CRM Pro, which is a solution we sell here at Productive Computing. I'm going to go to the Documents area and create a new document for this particular contact. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to encrypt the text data here in this description. I'll call it Super Secret. And let's go get some fake text while I'm at it. You can go to this generator here called lipsum.com. Choose the number of paragraphs you want. I'll do three paragraphs and we'll generate some fake text here. Actually, I only want a couple of paragraphs. Copy that and paste it here. There, now we have some super secret notes to encrypt. So first we'll need a script. Now note that I have a container field here, which would be a good holding place for these secret notes. And in fact, that's how this encryption works. It takes text data, combines it with a key. You end up with a binary file that's stored in a container field, such as the one shown here. All right, let's create a script to encrypt it. I'll put it over here under docs and we'll call this encrypt. Now what I thought we might do is show a custom dialog and give the user the opportunity to put in their key or a password. So let's just say enter encryption password now. Then we'll leave a cancel option there and then we'll go to the input fields in order to accept that data. And we'll put it actually in a variable called password, dollar sign password. And we'll give it a label called password. And that will be the password that we're going to use for this. Now, once we have a show custom dialog, we need to analyze the results. So we'll do a last message choice. And if the user selects cancel, which would be indicated with a two, we'll exit the script. Else, we'll actually encrypt the file. So to do that, I'm going to call a simple set field script step. And I'll locate the field that I want to set, which in this case is the container within my documents table. That's the target field. And then the calculation, we will call upon a built-in function. This was actually created in FileMaker 16 and is useful now from 16 on. And it's called, you can actually just start typing encrypt and you'll find it very easily. It's technically called crypt encrypt. And it asks for two parameters. The first parameter is the actual data you want to encrypt. And if you recall, that was the description text from the table documents. So that will be right here. I'll just double click that here, put that in there. And the key in this case is any text string key that I want to bind this particular data to in order to fulfill the encryption criteria. So for that, we will use the variable that we just defined in the custom dialog a moment ago, and we'll call that password. So we're going to give it the text that we want to encrypt and the password that we want to bind it to and we are setting it to the container field. So technically we are done at this point. We have properly finished this. Now, what would normally happen is that the user would want to most likely hide this data or delete this data after it becomes encrypted inside the container field. So we'll finish this with a final script step called, uh, let's just say set field. If it's successful, we will clear that field and it will be the description and we'll set that to blank but we'll do that only if it was successful. And we'll do a get last error equals zero, which means success. And then bring that here so that it works. And that's it. So let's go ahead and assign this to a button. And what I'll do is I'll steal this insert button because it's 
a good size, it's located in the right place, it has the same look and feel. I'll double click that button now and I'll call this encrypt. And we'll give it an icon, maybe this icon where the file is inserted into the folder as if we were encrypting something. And then the script that we want to run is that brand new one called encrypt. So let's give it a try. I'll push encrypt. And if I hit cancel, it will just stop the script, exit it. And then if I click encrypt, but this time put in a password of let's say one, two, three, I'll push OK. And it's taken my data, it's encrypted it, bound it with the one, two, three password, put it in the container field, and of course the script step cleared the description. Now I've got a fully encrypted, secure piece of text. Now if someone were to come along and attempt to export these field contents, they will be able to do that, of course. There's nothing preventing them from doing that in the way that I've got the solution set up. But this file that was exported is still encrypted, and there's absolutely nothing they can do to get into this or to somehow hack it. If it's readable under some sort of file reader or text editor, uh, it will be gibberish. It'll be all encrypted. So that's how you encrypt specific field data here in FileMaker. Now, to unencrypt it, it would be the same in reverse. So let's go back into script workspace and we'll duplicate that encrypt script. And of course we'll call it decrypt. And we'll change a few things here to make it appropriate for decrypt. We'll just say enter the decrypt password now. Okay, and we'll still allow them to cancel that and this time we're going to be setting the description field with the final result of the unencrypted text. And then the crypt encrypt function is actually going to be decrypt, which is right here. And we'll put the container field. Now we have to tell it which container holds the data. So we actually have the container here in the documents. And then the key is still going to be dollar password. And we'll delete the original here. So now we've got crypt, decrypt, the container that we want to pull from, and the password we want to use. If that's successful, we won't need to clear anything. So we'll delete that particular logic there. We'll leave the actual if statement there for future coding. All right, so let's test the decrypt. I will assign that to a button. All right. And we'll call it decrypt. We'll change the icon here and we'll change the script assignment to decrypt. All right, now we've got our decrypt script done. And if we click that now and put in the password of 123, it has decrypted our text. Now we could choose to delete the actual container field, but perhaps that's not a good idea in this particular use case example because you may just want to look at it temporarily to see those super secret notes without actually removing the original encrypted data here in the container field. So the decrypt might have a different logic whereby you're not going to delete anything after it's done. Now one other tip here that you can do that makes this a little bit better, if you go to the show custom dialog when you're Entering that password, it might be nice to hide that password using the password character option. Same with the decrypt on that show custom dialog. You might want to just hide those passwords. For example, let's say you wanted to decrypt data and somebody was looking over your shoulder who didn't have access to this sensitive data. It might be nice to, to hide that password. Now let me just clear the container field here and we'll re-encrypt this text. And also note that it didn't preserve my bold either. So it won't in preserve the integrity of stylized text here in a text field in FileMaker. Let me encrypt that again. This time I'll put in the 123 password and the password is in fact disguised. And there's my encryption. Same with the de decryption, disguised password, and then the super secret notes available again for me to see. So now let's take a look at crypt and decrypt as it relates to base64 or container data like a picture. So what I'll do is I'll clear the container field and I'll clear my super secret notes. In this case, I want to actually start with a picture. So let's go ahead and insert a picture of this New England Medical Center health security card. And let's say I want to encrypt this picture. And let's say that not only do I want to encrypt the picture, but I want to maintain the picture in the same container field so that I don't have to create two fields, one for the original, one for the encryption. So this is an example where you can actually do that. 
what I'll do is I will go into my script workspace again, and I'll duplicate the original encrypt script, and I'll drag it down here. We'll rename it to something more appropriate, like encrypt picture. That's a good name for it. And the good news is we have a lot to start with. We have enter encryption password now. We have the cancel button. We have the password and the password variable. We have the message choice, all of that. Now I can actually keep this assignment to where it puts the final version of this. It will stay in the container field. Over here, we'll change how this works. I'll leave that up there for reference, but we are going to encrypt. This time with base64. And the data that it's going to use is going to come from the actual container here. And the key will be the same password. I'll remove the original function here. And now we've got the crypt encrypt base64. We're grabbing the container and putting in the password. So that should encrypt that. And the destination is still the container field itself. So we're pulling from the same container that we're pushing to all in one function. And this actually will work. So if it's successful, we don't need to do anything in this particular situation. Let's go put this to the test. Okay, we'll grab the original encrypt button and I'll call it encrypt pick. We'll use the same icon, that's fine. And we'll assign it to the right script here called encrypt picture. And we'll put this to the test. Encrypt pick, put in the password. And now my picture is replaced with an actual text string, which is representing the picture and encrypted. And once decrypted, we'll get a picture back. So with that in mind, let's now create our script to decrypt picture. So I'll duplicate my original decrypt script. And we'll call it pick. And it'll say here, enter the decryption password now. That's fine. Input fields are all the same. Nothing changes there. The target for this will be the container field. And the function we'll use, we'll keep the original one there, and I'll call it decrypt. This time it'll be crypt decrypt base64. The text string that we need to pull from is going to be the container field itself. Even though you think about containers holding pictures, they can actually hold text, or in this case, binary text. And the key is going to be password. And we'll delete the original function up here. This time, if it's successful, I actually want to commit the records. That will refresh the container data and allow us to see the picture right away. All right, now let's assign a button for the decrypt pick. Assign that to the script, depict pick. Probably should change the name of this here to picture to keep it consistent. All right, now let's decrypt this. Perfect. So that's how you encrypt Base64, which is particularly good for files and pictures stored in a container field. There's another way to protect field data in a FileMaker file. You can use the built-in FileMaker security. So I'll go up under File, Manage Security. And I'll go to Advanced Settings and then click New to create a new privilege set. I'll call this Test. And here you'll see an option that says records. And when you go to click custom privileges, you'll get a list of all your tables. And then I can click on any one particular table in this file. Let's just say I want to go to the events table. Actually, let's go back to the documents table. And let's say that I want all users to be able to view all records, edit all records, create records, and even delete all records, but I want to limit their field access by doing this here. Click limited. I'll expand my window a little bit so we can see all the fields within this particular table, which happens to be documents. So to protect a particular field, I could leave this as no access. So I'll select all and then deselect the container and put all modifiable except the container field, which is no access. Now this does in fact protect this one field from this privilege set from being able to be seen. It'll actually say no access in the field if I were to re-log in as this particular user assigned to this privilege set. And that works great, but it includes all records. So that may or may not work with your particular scenario.
sometimes you are working with developers who, who do in fact have full access to the database. And you want them to have full access to the database, but on rare occasions, you want to protect isolated records and isolated files within those records. Like for instance, the ID of a particular record, maybe you don't want the other people on the team who have full access to the database, you don't really want them to have access to that one particular piece of data. Encrypting it, keeping it to a password that only you know or you and another team knows, that's a great way of isolating and locking down data while still giving you the privileges of having other teammates have full access to the system. So you can mix and match these different methods together if you want. So the encrypt decrypt is very specific. It's really for that particular record, that particular field, Whereas this security here under the advanced settings, when you're talking about a privilege set, it tends to include all records and you can give access or not access to a particular field, but it's inclusive of, the, of all records in that file. Hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to subscribe, like, and share this with others if you found it valuable. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.